This film shows the preparation, transport, delivery, and emplacement of the SATAM in typical parachute missions by swimmers. Once released, the SATAM falls to the end of a 17-foot lowering line attached to the jumper's parachute harness. Separating the munition from the jumper decreases the impact shock on the jumper at water entry. Keeping the munition attached to the parachute prevents free fall of the munition and prevents the jumper from losing the munition in night missions or heavy seas. The strap end of the lowering line is passed through the apex of the harness and a metal ring on the underwater pressure case. Once secured, the line is coiled in a figure eight or S coil and placed in a breakaway bag. The bag is closed with nylon thread or a heavy rubber band. Next, a cloth cover is placed over the flat end of the munition. This end of the munition has several projections, including the arming mechanism, which might injure the parachutist or snag parachute shroud lines if not covered. The strap end of the lowering line is temporarily tied to the cloth cover to keep the lowering line from being pulled out of the breakaway bag during handling. The SATAM flotation bag is similar in appearance to an air mattress. While airborne and during the first part of the jump, the flotation bag cushions the parachutist and protects him from injury. To keep the munition from swinging away from the jumper, a strap from the flotation bag is attached to either the right or left leg of the jumper with a quick release fold. The parachutist releases this strap in the air just before he drops the munition to the end of the lowering line. The cloth cover on the aft end of the munition is also tied to the flotation bag to keep the cover from being lost in midair. Inflation is simple, and the flotation bag has ample buoyancy to keep the SADAM afloat while the jumper gets out of his parachute and puts his scuba gear into operation. Preparing the swimmer for a SADAM jump mission is as simple as preparing the munition. First, the swimmer puts on all or part of a wetsuit. Next, he puts on a standard Navy life jacket. The tethering strap from the SADAM lowering line is fastened to this waistband. The tethering strap keeps the munition joined to the swimmer after he removes the parachute harness and his lowering line strap. The swimmer's weight belt goes on over the waistband. Scuba gear goes on next. A variety of scuba equipment is compatible with this type of delivery. Standard or steerable T-10 military parachutes are used, but the harness back straps are usually lengthened to get the parachute on over the scuba tanks. Next, the SATAM suspension fittings are attached to the D-rings on the parachute harness. The strap end of the lowering line is passed beneath the right main lift web of the parachute harness and then secured in the buckle. Fastening the lowering line here takes much of the shock off the jumper when the SADAM is dropped to the end of the lowering line. The 
The T-7A reserve parachute is attached to D-rings on the Saddam suspension fittings. Mounting the reserve chute separately from the munition allows the parachutist to release one side of the reserve parachute in the air, permitting free access to the quick release box on the parachute harness. The scuba mouthpiece is attached to the parachute harness in a position easily reached by the jumper once he is in the water. Engineering development tests on the Saddam Parachutist Swimmer Delivery System were conducted jointly by the United States Navy and Sandia Laboratory. UDT and SEAL team members jumped from several Navy aircraft to evaluate their suitability as carriers for Saddam jumpers. Each aircraft presented different problems for the parachutist in terms of body position and the sequence he had to follow to make a safe exit. Tests were made from the CH-46A Sea Knight helicopter, with two parachutists participating in each jump. One carried the Saddam, the second was the safety man. The Navy's P-5 aircraft presented a rather unusual problem. Not only is the exit door very small, but the bottom of the door is considerably above the aircraft deck. The problem was solved by building a wooden platform from which the jumpers could make an easy exit. Jump tests were also made from a Marine C-130 cargo aircraft. and from the SH-3A Navy helicopter. After exit from the aircraft, all jump missions into water follow the same sequence. Once the parachute stabilizes, the jumper releases one side of his reserve parachute. Then he releases the leg strap. He actuates the single point quick release mechanism and the Saddam falls to the end of the lowering line. The jumper positions the quick release box on the parachute harness so that a single blow will open it. Once in the water, the two members of the jump team remove and sink their parachutes and parachute harness. Using the lowering line as a tow line, the demolition team then swims to the target. At the target, the tow line is used to secure the Saddam to an anchoring point. The time delay between arming and detonation, preset during preparation of the munition, allows the swimmers time to make a safe escape. After turning the external arming mechanism, which starts timer rundown, the swimmers move out. They rendezvous with a sub or swim out of the area and are picked up by high-speed surface craft. Behind them, they leave the armed Saddam. <laughs> 